Then we have Malcolm Gordon taking on Jimmy Flick. Back-to-back really tricky fights to break down. We got Malcolm Gordon. This guy is a BJJ black belt. He's got some decent striking as well. Really high striking guard, and he likes to come forward, which does leave him open to get taken down, which is almost whenever people want to because his takedown defense is at an insanely low 9%. But ultimately, he's fine with that because he wants to be on the ground. He wants to scramble. He wants to work his BJJ. He averages almost two takedowns of his own per fight, but he has a very low 30% takedown accuracy because of his suspect chin. His path in most fights is to take people to the ground. He is coming off the one-minute knockout loss to Jake Hadley. He's taking on Jimmy Flick. This guy's a grappler who likes to take risks while working for submissions. He will work anything he can. He will dive. He will duck, dive, ditch, dodge. Let me know if you get that reference to any submission. If there's even the slightest inkling, a twinkle in your eye of, hey, there might be a submission here, he'll go for it. And that's what makes him incredibly dangerous. He has okay takedowns with an average of close to two takedowns per fight. His striking is stiff. He has a negative striking differential of two to five, which we broke that down with Priscilla. This dude is only landing two punches to every five that get bashed into his face. He's coming off two bad losses in a row. The first was a knockout loss to Charles Johnson, who has no power, and most recently a knockout loss to Alessandra Costa. Essentially, before he had a two-year layoff, this guy was a dangerous grappler who could strike long enough to get it to the ground. But since that two-year layoff, he's been chinny, he's been slow, and he cannot seem to find his footing. But this is a close fight, and I have flip-flopped on this multiple times. These guys are almost carbon copies of each other. Both of them are chinny grapplers who have terrible takedown defense and mediocre takedown offense. I think Flick is going to be the more dangerous grappler. Gordon is probably the more dangerous striker. Gordon's UFC losses are better than Flick's in name, right? Knockouts by Hadley, Sumaderji, Amir Abazi, and a submission to Makayev. All pretty quality losses, but I'm still going to ever so slightly lean Flick here, and that is only based off of grappling. If Flick is able to get past Gordon's incredible 9% takedown defense, I'm going to have to assume he's got a pretty good advantage on the ground. This fight could be over in one minute. Both of their last fights were over in one minute. This could be as well. This could also be a sloppy three-round mess. This is a weird fight. Malcolm Gordon's the Canadian. I'm assuming they're like, listen, if he can beat anybody on the roster, it's going to be Jimmy Flick. So that's what they've done here. I'm still going to, I'm going to pick Flick by like this much and literally only because of the dangerous grappling, but this guy hasn't been able to do anything since that layoff. So we're going to leave it alone as far as bets are concerned. Again, maybe we get a favorable round line lean. As soon as we get a good round line, we'll hop on it. But for now, let's just leave this fight alone. Let's just leave it alone. Enjoy it for what it is. It should be over pretty quick and it should be pretty fun to watch. Hopefully, hopefully I don't bet on this fight. We got weeks to just stare at these things and work your way in the bet. Hopefully, I don't bet on this fight. Hopefully, you don't either. There's some other very good spots on this card that I have found that we will talk about in a minute. Before you go, let me give you $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you. 